Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Please welcome our next guest, Amas Riley from Counter Pulse. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's so great to be here. Okay, so Counterpulse, tell me what this is. Counterpulse is a 25-year-old arts organization that was founded on Divisadero Street in the middle of the AIDS crisis, and it was a performance space that was dedicated to supporting primarily LGBT artists who were um, willing to experiment in primarily dance and experimental movement. The organization itself has evolved into a performance venue that is now breaking ground in the Tenderloin at a brand new facility uh, at Turk and Taylor, where we're or uh, breaking ground in a 10,000 square foot facility that just opened uh, last March. Okay, and Counterpulse, when you talk about it, it's always uh, building a movement of risk taking. What kind exactly. of risks are being taken? Well, they are risks in a number of ways, um, primarily in the artistic realm, right? These are artists that wouldn't find uh, stages in larger venues, and so we are a place and a home for emerging artists and uh, incubating artists who are trying to develop art on the edges of uh, what is aesthetically valuable to you know most theater going aud audiences. Sure, what are some of the themes? Well, we're talking about um, risks in all of its forms. So people are talking about identity, people are talking about the struggles in uh, fringe communities that are economically disadvantaged, um, and also uh, work that wouldn't be housed in, say, um, your larger arts institutions. So how has Counterpulse, how's it changed direction since entering the Tenderloin? Well, since we came into the Tenderloin, we wanted to come in and enter in what we have decided to call an authentic way. Um, the Tenderloin has a decades-long history of residents that are clearly underserved, and so we didn't want to just parachute in as an arts organization that was going to transform community. We wanted to really interact with the residents that have been there for a long time, and so we've um, immediately started integrating our work into the residents of the uh, nearby single room occupancy hotels. Um, we perform arts workshops for the residents and we also have hosted showcases for um, the residents who create their own work based on interacting with our artist facilitators. And Dalt Hotel is one of the, the hotels. The Dalt Hotel is our nearest neighbor. Yeah, they're our nearest and dearest. And we've been working in there for about a year and a half. Um, we're in there on a weekly basis. And like I said, we've hosted two showcases that um, highlight the work of the residents inside the hotels that range anywhere from visual art to lip sync to drag performances to uh, just a spoken word poetry and theater. Sure, it sounds really interesting. So what kind of, what kind of uh, uh, reaction do you get from people who come to these shows? It's interesting because most of the work occurs inside the hotels, so the residents are the primary audience for these for this work, and it's um, amazing to see them come together and support one another in a way that um, validates the work of the of the other residents that are participating in the workshop, and also builds community within the the hotel itself. Um, a lot of these the residents exist sort of in isolation, and this is one opportunity for them to come together and actually bond through art making. Right, in some ways, this they've never seen this kind of art before, right? Absolutely, and it's also a place where where the artists, the artist participants, that, that, as we like to call them, get to um, showcase what th their talents are that, that remain basically within uh, the, the confines of their 10 by 10 SRO room. Sure. So it's a place for them to kind of get their expressive voice um, in front of their peers. And we do have some pictures of some yeah. of the art. So yeah, let's take a look and see, and then you can you can explain. Okay, yeah. so this is dancing? This is, yeah, this is a nonstop Vangra in the uh, Tenderloin National Forest. This was a community event that we did last year. Uh, free and open to the public. It was a way of introducing ourselves to the Tenderloin neighborhood. Tenderloin National Forest is on Golden Gate Avenue, hosted by the Luggage Store Gallery. And it's just an open space that was created in one of the vacant alleys um, and turned into an art space. Yeah, that's great. It looks, it looks beautiful. Okay, what is this? These are the ODC dancers, um, we, uh, Capacitor, and we hosted them as part of our annual May Day celebration last year. Um, we work with a number of dance companies uh, in co-production, and this was one of their um, performance, uh, performance pieces from sure. Uh, fall of last season. So you talked about the new facility that you entered into. What about the partnerships that made this all possible? It's an interesting dynamic and groundbreaking work, I would have to say. It's um, the Northern California Community Loan Fund came together with a new organization called the Community Arts Stabilization Trust. And together, working with some of the phil philanthropic community, uh, helped us mortgage or leverage the resources that they had available to actually purchase a building in in the tenderloin and over the course of the next seven to ten years we will buy back the in a fancy sort of lease to own agreement we will buy back the building and, and secure a permanent home for experimental art in in downtown san francisco so when is the official opening celebration of the building well we're I'd officially, imagine you're having a big celebration it is it's, <laughs> it's been a long time in the making and we can't wait to cut the ribbon on june 23rd we're hosting what we're calling the magenta party it's sort of counterpulse's countercultural 
response to the various white parties that a lot of larger sure. arts institutions but have. But magenta <laughs> is the color of the building that we actually moved into, so we wanted to celebrate the history of the building and, and the sort of risque nature of the, of the neighborhood by um, painting it magenta. And in September, Counterpulse will be celebrating 25 years. Yeah, it will actually become 25 years old in September. Yeah, that is that is wonderful. Okay, upcoming artist in residence showcase. Uh, upcoming is uh, Supernatural. This weekend we'll be hosting. Um, you can probably go see it tonight at um, the Supernatural is an exchange with the Swiss consulate and artists from Switzerland. Oh. Um, and then we have a number of events coming up uh, throughout the 25th anniversary season. So just look for the annual se uh, schedule because there's a lot of things going on yeah. every weekend. Tomas, it sounds great. All Thank right, you. thanks so much for coming right. on and telling us all about it. And for more information about Counterpulse, just log on to counterpulse.org. Again, that's counterpulse.org. Coming up, a nonprofit teaching San Francisco and the Bay Area how to garden. We'll be right back.